Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the monthly readings. We are a little bit behind. Um, we just experienced the full moon and I was swamped with work, uh, tons of spell work and uh, consultations. So uh, we are, like I said, a bit behind, but here we are nonetheless. This is going to be for all the zodiac signs. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. For those of you guys that are new, hello, welcome. My name is Pinky. You will be able to find monthly readings, love readings, spell work, all that good stuff on this channel. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button to help us with the algorithm. All right, let's get into the reading. We're going to start off here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. All right, I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love, my ancestors and archangels, please step forward. Allow us guide all my subscribers on their journey towards answers, removing any doubts or any fears. Let's get into it. Let's see what's going on with Aries for this month of September. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. When we're done with your reading, Aries, we got cards flying out everywhere, which I'm not surprised. We just experienced the full moon. Give me one second. All right, we're back. Like I said, uh, this is like my third or fourth time trying to do the readings. Uh, cards just keep flying out. Uh, of course, it has a lot to do with the energies right now. But anyways, we're going to get through this. All right, let's see what's going on with you, Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. How are you doing, Aries? Hope you guys are doing amazing. All right, Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of September 2022. All right, here we go. All right, Aries. There's something you've been very patient about, Aries. Uh, I want to say the past couple of months. For some of you guys, it is the unveiling of the healing that you've been experiencing or that you've been going through for quite some time. Now, when I say healing, uh, primarily has a lot to do with a feeling of some type of deception, some type of being let down. For a lot of you guys, this could be relationship related. It could be uh, the struggle of the ego. Now, a lot of people, when we experience separations or breakups, if you take the time to heal, which 95% of the time people, you know, humans are such in a rush to, uh, you know, make themselves feel better at the expense of other people, whether they're aware of it or not. Um, that's why we have so many people jumping from one relationship to another, no judgment there. But at some point, there's going to be a need to heal, to face your shadow side, to heal that shadow side. Um, and I feel like for a lot of you guys, you've been experiencing almost the, the not wanting to deal with a healing, a healing that's been happening with for you guys i want to say the past couple of years so for some of you guys it could be you know ending in relationships that have like a mirror effect from your previous relationships or some type of comparison and what they're telling you is that at this point there's almost a a feeling of realization that i've been pushing people away or pushing people or testing people to see if they, you know, really care and to show me and prove to me. But there's some type of revelation that is happening with you guys right now where you're understanding or realizing, coming to the conclusion that it wasn't so much about the people that you were dealing with and that you were testing. It has more to do with the fact that you were unhealed. And because of that unhealed uh, version of yourself, there was a lot of insecurities when it came to relationships and partnerships. Uh, however, I do see that this has been a process for you, but I do see you guys getting stronger and coming out of that. Um, now, what they're telling you here is for this month of September, it's going to be very important when it comes to relationships. And this could be with family. This could be with friends. This could be with your kids. 
This could be with colleagues, coworkers, whatever. Any type of relationship, wherever you feel like there are insecurities coming up, insecurities about rejection. So as an example, this can manifest in the way of wanting, like you've been working and busting your ass off for quite a while, but there is a fear of like vocalizing what you want. As an example, talking to your superiors, I, you know, it's time that I get a raise. And there is this hesitation because there is insecurity issues. There is a, a fear of rejection, a fear of hearing the boss tell you, well, you know, it's not perfect time right now, or it's not a good time, or uh, just a flat out no. And what Spirit is telling you is if you don't vocalize what it is that you want and you remain in that energy of fear, you're going to continuously keep going around in circles, uh, figuring out, you know, getting to the point of having to understand that you have to overcome those fears in order to continuously keep evolving and growing and expanding your consciousness. So again, it is about being loyal to yourself, being loyal and standing up for yourself. It is about, even if necessary, being aggressive when it comes to goals and aspirations and being a sharpshooter, basically. Deciding, you know, I been working for this company for over two years and they haven't given me a raise it's about damn time and you've put in the work and now it's time for you to really believe in yourself when it comes to standing up for yourself Aries like I said this is in every aspect this could be with relationships as well if you've had a tendency of being in a relationship or some type of connection where there is a bit of disparity or a bit of not knowing exactly where you stand because they don't want to make it official and you're wanting but you're hoping that they will be the one to bring it up at some point you need to stop wasting your time and speak your truth at this point in time we've been dating for a while and you know i think it's time we make it official like it's gonna take for you to take that action um and again it has a lot to do with you know the the, the growing of that experience that you've been holding on to uh, whether it's the fear of rejection, the fear of rejection, whether it's the fear of being denied something. But if you don't ask for it, you won't be able to fully experience uh, the potential and how much more you can accomplish by being unapologetic about your goals and aspirations. So again, um, I do see movement. I do see the opportunity to take it to the next level areas, but it's going to take for you to be the one to step up to rise to that occasion. So my advice for you guys is again for this month, be vocal about what it is that you want. Be transparent. Don't allow people to give you the runaround. Be a straight shooter and speak your truth. Ask for that raise. Ask for uh, that incentive. Ask for vacation time if you've exhausted yourself. Ask for uh, that connection that is wonky and you don't know exactly what it is, if what you're wanting is long-term, it's time you speak up. If you guys have been dealing with someone and haven't revealed your feelings for them because there's fear of rejection, you may be missing out on something great. So again, speak your truth, speak your peace. All right, let's see what the Oracle cards say for you, Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of September, 2022. And we have number six. This is an indication of fear. This is, you know, fear, threat, uncertainty, uh, cover up, non-transparency. Um, this is, you know, fog, air, wind. It is a symbolization of you see the clouds and it's like gloomy and, and gray at the top. But through this, you can see the blue. So behind those clouds, there is a sun right? There is blessings. Don't let the fear, don't let the fear of rejection, the fear of being told no, the fear of whatever, don't let it keep you so paralyzed that you don't take chances. Because if you don't, you're going to be missing out and you, your life is, you're going to be living your life at the, uh, at the mercy of others. And you deserve to rise to that occasion because you're capable of making those things happen, Aries, okay? So I don't think that spirits can be more clear than that. 
All right. Now let's go to Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month. Here we go. We have the Empress card, Seven of Cups, the Fool card, Five of Wands, Eight of Swords, and the Queen of Cups. A lot, a lot of opportunities are coming your way, Taurus. Now, one of the things that they are saying here is, again, be fearless when it comes to starting something new, when it starts to, or when it comes to, uh, you know, being able to turn the page, let go of the past and move forward. It's going to take courageousness on your part to be a little bit more spontaneous, um, but it is necessary at this point in time. There is a little bit of stagnation, but that stagnation comes from the fear of not wanting to expand or not wanting to get out of your comfort zone. However, the positive in this is that in the end of, I want to say the end of September, probably beginning of October, there is almost like the your intuition is going to be so sharpened. It's going to be so heightened. For some of you guys, you are going to be having revelations through your dream state. So this could be being very uh, almost prophetic dreams for others of you. It could just be that your intuition is so sharp that you are able to tap into that and speak or say the right things at the right time um, that fall on ears that can potentially open more doors for you. So again, I feel like there's been a bit of resistance for some of you guys in regards to expansion and growth. There is a want to grow and keep you know, going up the ladder, but there has also been a bit of hesitation on that because you don't want to get out of your comfort zone. Um, whether you're ready or not, the universe is stepping in and they're going to push you. They're going to push, they're going to put you in situations and circumstances where you need to think on your feet, um, where you need to take quick action. But that also, again, uh, nothing to fear because your intuition is going to be very heightened that you're able to um, very auto, like very what's the word I'm looking for in the moment be able to make decisions that are the right decisions because you're being guided right now um, five of you know five of wands with the eight of swords has more to do with fear the fear of what others may say or what others may think of you uh, the perception of what others may have of you. I know that 90% of the time when I ask clients, you know, do you care about what people think? Most of them say no, but they do at, in some type of degree. Everyone varied in very different aspects, but it comes down to, yes, you care about what people may say or think. And that a lot of the time is something that is a detriment to your growth because you put so much pressure on yourself to be a certain or to present yourself a certain way and what spirit is telling you here is be fearless in taking new opportunities do things uh, very differently and whether you're ready or not they're going to present you opportunities and situations that are going to open your horizons to being able to see really to be more in the present moment to experience life more present and more like mindfulness um, of what you're experiencing versus like being very detached from things, people, or situations. I see you guys being uh, guided basically for this month um, and it has a lot to do with your growth. Spirit is wanting you, it's wanting to shake things up and like I said, I feel that they're going to be speaking to you directly through your intuition. So let's see what your oracle cards are here for the month of September 2022. What is the oracle message here for Taurus for this month of September? Here we go. And we have number 18. And this is loyalty. This is also friendships, reliability, alertness, helpfulness, sincerity. Uh, this is being able to surround yourself uh, with people that are loyal or people that have good intentions or uh, that are really wanting what's best for you. I feel like you guys have been decluttering the past couple of months when it comes to people that are falling off of your life or new people that are coming in. Um, it's all about timing. So I feel like there has been a purging 
of pulling away from negative people or people that are just draining your energy. And now you are being surrounded or will be surrounded by people that are sincere, that have genuine intentions for you, and that also have um, the best of your interest at heart. So this is very uh, amazing energy, Taurus. All right, now let's go to Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini here. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Gemini, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September. Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Gemini. First card is the Page of Pentacles, the Lovers, Two of Pentacles, Devil, Six of Swords, and the Knight of Swords. All right, Gemini. So I feel like there is a lot of a lot of information that is coming back and forth. This is almost like he said, she said type of thing. It's going to feel, I feel like for this month of September, you're going to be feeling like you're going to question people's intentions. Um, so the best way of describing it is, as an example, rumors coming to you or you hearing rumors about people that they said this and they said that about you. And you're going to be questioning, well, why do they feel that comfortable speaking like that around you? I thought you were my friend. There is this confusion type of energy as well as duality. So that gives me the impression almost of like questioning who are your true friends or who are the ones that really have sincere intentions or those that are just trying to steer things up. For some of you guys, you could be dealing with a relationship, a very toxic type of environment or relationship where there is a highly need for balance. It's almost like someone in this connection or in this relationship has surrendered their power. It's almost like being at the mercy of them. Now, this could be vice versa. It is a general reading. But what Spirit is telling you is at this point, it is important, Gemini, to take things, uh, you know, the way the universe is showing you. If, like I said, if a friend of yours that you consider a very close friend comes to you and tells you some type of rumor that they heard about you from someone else, um, you should be questioning why do they feel that comfortable speaking about you like that around your friend if it's supposed to be a good friend. Um, it's really about not so much questioning, but like paying attention to people's actions. Um, and whatever it is that is unfolding, it's going to be very important for you to take it as it is. Whatever decluttered needs to happen, whatever people that need to fall off of your life, are starting to fall off. Don't try to attain it. Don't try to hold on to it. Don't try to save it. Because what Spirit is telling you, it's time to move on. You've been in this stagnant situation or in this stagnant connection for quite a while to the point where you feel helpless or you feel like you don't have options. And it's not that you don't have options. It's just that you crave and desire and want um, to keep them content and in that contentment it is making you unhappy because you're taking on too much responsibility whereas the other person is really not doing very much just taking so what spirit is telling you is at this point in time for the month of september and this doesn't have to be relationships this could be your colleagues this could be your co-workers this could be your boss this could be whoever it is that you're dealing with that makes you feel like you don't have control and all they're doing is taking and taking, whether it's taking advantage of you, whether it's making you feel like they're not listening to you, whether you feel like whatever it is that they're telling you, it's a form of manipulation. Take it for what it is, because most likely it is. And what Spirit is telling you is cut them off. It's time to move on. It's time to uh, continue growing and advancing. If you feel stuck right now, it's not that you are physically stuck. It's just that the people that you're dealing with that you've refused to cut out of your life are draining the shit out of you. So at this point in time, it is important to protect your energy, protect your mind, and protect your peace, peace of mind. Um, 
So again, I feel like it may be a challenge, um, especially if it is someone you really care for or a family member. It could be difficult, um, but at this point, you can't be turning a blind eye to their toxicity. You need to realize that if they affect you, whether it's on an emotional, physical, or spiritual level, it's time to walk away from that. All right, and what is the oracle card here? What is the oracle message for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to the situation? Oracle card for Gemini. All right, here we go. And it is number eight. So this is all to do with, again, deep sorrow, suffering. Uh, this is the denial of endings. So when we talk about that right because this is the coffin and it is all about grief trauma it's about endings you know and, and feeling like it's been a misfortune or feeling like you continuously keep dealing with a situation that ultimately has come to a conclusion don't try to hold on to that the more we try to hold on to people situations or circumstances it's kind of like if you get, as an example, if you get a, if you get a chain, right, and you get the chain and you pull it towards you, what is it going to do? By you pulling it towards you to make it closer to you, it's going to go back. And the more back it goes, the further it goes, the more you pull it towards you. So metaphorically speaking. So what they're saying here is if there are endings or conclusions that are happening right now in your life, Gemini, it is time to accept it. It is time to embrace that ending, though it may be heartbroke or heartbreak and it may be difficult. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to move on. It doesn't mean that this is the end. Um, it is the end of that story or of that connection or of that relationship, but it also brings new beginnings. So again, don't put yourself in a situation where you are constantly making yourself feel worse by holding on to people that continuously keep cutting into you because that's going to ultimately be more hard, uh, hard to do and more difficult to be able to overcome. Uh, whereas now embracing you know, whatever relationship or connection this is that they're speaking about, coming to the understanding that, okay, if it's a family member, obviously you can, you know, just fall off the map with them. Um, but you do have a say whether you include them or bring them in your life or whether you want to create distance because they're so toxic. It's time for you to take care of your uh, mental state of mind, Gemini. All right, now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Cancer, we have the Hierophant. Temperance, star, wow. Whew. All right, so we have four major arcanas right now. Um, so this is directly speaking about things that you may feel you're not in control of right now. In reality, you're not in control of them. It has a lot to do with the planet alignments with the universe at this point in time. There is a very definite theme here which has to do with the long-term goals that you've desired or that you've hoped or you've been wishing for and the constant feeling of it never coming the way you expect it. So what I mean by that is almost a feeling of things are going great, but for some reason they just fall off or they completely come to a halt and it just seems like you can't bounce back from that so the connections or relationships falter or they you know break down or they come to an end and there is a constant feeling of putting the blame on others or putting the blame on like your luck and what spirit is telling you is luck is what you make it 
So when I say that, it's almost like if you're constantly, as an example, if you're constantly being in relationships where things are going great and then all of a sudden they just fall apart, if that happens so often, your mind on a subconscious level starts to believe, right, whatever it is that you're feeding it. So if you're thinking like only this happens to me or only this bad luck happens to me, then you are accepting that it's something about you or that it has something to do with you of the reason why things never come to full fruition. And what Spirit is telling you is that you most certainly have to work on your state of mind and what you feed your mind, what you teach yourself. If it hasn't, you know, whether it's relationships or goals, you know, maybe you've been trying really hard to get that high position and for some reason it wasn't given to you but another position that is a little bit higher than the one you had was given you almost see it as like oh I was so close why does this always happen to me instead of seeing it like the bigger picture and the bigger picture being that as an example the job description or the the job example I gave why not take it as a blessing that you weren't given that exact job that you wanted because maybe this new job that was given to you is going to be more beneficial for your state of mind. Maybe the people you're going to be working with is going to be more harmonious type of energy. Maybe you're going to be in a much better type of, you know, vibe or energy with the people that you're working with. Maybe you're just not ready for that higher position. And if you would have been put in that position, you could have, gotten overwhelmed and ended up quitting or you know what I mean so what they're telling you essentially is whatever hasn't unfolded the way you expected it to cancer you need to understand that spirit and the universe knows a little bit better than we do and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not lucky that you don't have you know good luck or uh, that it's something about you it has more to do with the fact of understanding that the little setbacks that you feel are major setbacks are in reality there is growth that needs to happen here there are lessons that you need to to learn and instead of seeing it as negative you need to learn to be more optimistic and more positive stop being patient and waiting for people as an example in relationships to make up their mind about whether they want something long term or not um you know Because ultimately what you're doing is you're wasting your time. And being able to see those signs, you know, instead of wasting four or five years waiting on someone that from the very beginning they told you they weren't looking for something serious. Instead of being hopeful about it, you should take those experiences that you've dealt with in the past and come to the realization that, you know what, time is always passing. Time doesn't forgive anyone if this person wants to play games or whatnot and I'm wanting something more serious, then you need to keep it pushing and stop waiting on people that are confused. Because what I'm sensing is more like putting yourself in situations that are uncalled for, but it's situations that you could have prevented. And you can't sit there and say it's your bad luck when it's you making those decisions. With the death card, there is an ending that needs to happen here. There is an old pattern, an old behavior that needs to happen. And in that ending or in the no longer having that toxic habit, you no longer have to feel like you have to continuously protect yourself because by you asserting yourself and knowing exactly what it is that you want, if the other person or partner that you're dealing with doesn't want that, then that's where you pump the brakes and tell them to get the fuck off your car and you keep it pushing. Why? Because if you don't and you continuously keep wasting your time or the lessons that you've gone through already, you're going to continuously keep feeling like you're being let down. But what Spirit is telling you is here, you know, you have the upper hand, you have the experience, you have what you've learned throughout the years. You just need to bring the balance, the balance within yourself, the understanding that the love or the relationship or the job or whatever it is that you're wanting to make happen, that you're wanting to call in, you already have that. But you need to believe that in order to see the manifestation of it. Okay? Very direct uh, message for cancers here. 
Let's see what the oracle message is for you, Cancer. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the oracle message for Cancers in regards to the situation, Spirit? Oracle card for Cancer. Okay, here we go. And we have number five. And this is about health. This is rest. This is tranquility, my lovelies. This is... This is about long-term, long-term goals. This is about longevity. It is about, you know, as the tree. Though it may take years, right? You plant a tree and it may take years for it to grow. The moment it grows, it sinks its roots so deep into the earth that it continuously keeps growing massively right but the roots are strong so what they're saying here is even if you feel like you've been on this journey wanting to manifest that long-term relationship or wanting to manifest that job that you've always wanted and it feels like it's been forever what spirit is telling you here is doing the work now right planting the seeds now you will attain that. You will see it flourish. You will see it grow. What is worthwhile is not always that easy. So again, work on being patient. Work on learning the lessons that you've experienced in the past. And try the best you can to no longer continuously keep making that 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 habit that is a detriment to your growth, Cancer. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How are you doing, my Leos? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. All right, here we go. We have the Eight of Swords, the Hanged Man, Ace of Pentacles, Knight of Swords, Five of Pentacles, and the Lover's Card. Okay. So there is a bit of stagnation. I feel like you guys are going back and forth regarding a situation or a decision that needs to be made. For some of you guys, this could be in regards to a relationship. For others of you, this could be in regards to a job or your profession. So the Eight of Swords and the Hanged Man indicating to me feeling like you are completely at a loss or like you don't have control over the situation. There's almost a feeling of aggressiveness or an aggressive tone um, at work. This could be with the people you work with. This could be people that are extremely competitive or a feeling like you just don't want a deal or you don't have what it takes to be dealing with this type of fuckery. Um, now with the ace of pentacles here, the ultimate message, and I'm going to be very straightforward. If this is money related, if this has to do with your business, your career, you know, your profession, what they're telling you is rise to the occasion, Leo, do not allow people that are unhappy or people that are unsatisfied. Don't let them get between you and your bag. It is about being methodical. It is about growing or rising to the occasion of, again, being methodical, not allowing pettiness or not allowing people that are extremely petty to rough your feathers in a very negative way that it gets to the point where it starts to affect your money. So what, what and essentially what they're saying here is you may feel like you're not in control, but you are. And you're in control by the simple fact of how you react to the situation. Yes, there is a lot of like toxic energy around you right now or people that are extremely, like I said, competitive or people that are jealous of you and envious of you. But what they're telling you here is the reason why they're like that is because they are unhappy and they have a lot of insecurity issues. So it's about rising to the occasion, knowing ultimately that you can outsmart them. You can make and not to be not to be you know petty or anything like that but 
like if they mess with you or if they say like stupid comments that really trigger you like you can do the same thing like you can mimic how they act or how they treat you and i'm not encouraging that behavior i mean if you want to be the bigger person like i said just don't simple and plain don't let people like get in between you and making your bank ultimately that's the message but they are showing me also that at the end of the day you can be petty too you can play the same ball they're playing you get me so it's about not allowing people to disencourage you or to feel like you're not in control of the situation because you are and you're in control by how you react to it so learn to be more um not necessarily confident but more aggressive and you know just 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 you know see what they're doing from afar don't get too close to the situation stay in your lane and keep you know busting your ass and you're gonna keep making your your bank basically um the lover's card is getting to the point of having to make a decision you're at crossroads right now and let those you know the being at crossroads always choose yourself always bet on yourself leo and what they're telling you here is basically be smarter than them obviously what they want is for you not to be there or to give up or to be disencouraged because they have something that they want to prove but you also have something to prove and your way of proving it is by being beautifully methodical and smart and not allowing them to get in your head let's see what your oracle message is here <laughs> yep so you have number seven which is snake complications temptation poison uh this is almost like you know the people that you're dealing with right now are like snakes right but here's the thing about snakes they don't play nice so if your work is feeling like it's very toxic it's very the thing about it is that even though you put a bunch of snakes together and it is the same type of snake they don't play nice so what happens after a while they will get annoyed and they will start attacking each other right to assert their dominance so what they're telling you is don't get to that level don't scoop to their level let them behead themselves let them you know deal with their drama because it'll come to the point where they just cannot stand each other or they will start to backstab each other seven is also an indication of intelligence so it is about be smarter than those that are conniving be smarter than those that are toxic be smarter than those that are pretending to be your friends but they're actually enemies because they talk shit about you behind your back if you know them and you know who they are it's not about being mad and oh my god i can't stand them it's about you know you see a snake you know it's a snake right at least you know your limits and what they're capable of doing so let people reveal their true character and deal with them accordingly and but they're not you know let them not pretend to be something else see them as exactly that they're a snake you know what to expect from a snake right when you're not looking they try to attack so just be methodical in the aspect of not putting your guard down not letting them into your private life um, not allowing their toxicity or negative, even rumors, you know, affect you. Um, be smarter than that. Snakes will be snakes. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus is unfolding for them for this month of September 2022. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. We have Four of Cups, Two of Wands, Five of Swords, The Empress, Page of Cups, and The High Priestess. Okay, 
So they're speaking to me about a person that you may be missing, someone that may be from a distance or perhaps there was some type of temporary separation or some type of distancing that recently happened. Um, it's, it, it's giving me the energy of a missed opportunity. So for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with someone that life kind of pulled them to, other, to another direction. It has more to do with what they're currently going through in their life or the lessons that need to that need to happen in their life as well as you currently setting out or having the need to set out and really focus primarily on your growth and on your finances so it's like it's a feeling of a missed opportunity but i feel that there's going to be a revisiting of this situation virgo so for some of you guys it could be that you know there was a in fact a separation Pride and ego got the best of both of you, and I feel that that's the reason why there hasn't been some type of reconciliation or some type of, like, reconnecting. I do see it happening in the near future, so for some of you guys, it, this can actually unfold uh, from now all the way to the end of September, where there is a conversation or communication that happens. A lot of it has to do with the fact of the full moon that we just experienced, Um but what they're saying ultimately here, Virgo, is that it is important to understand that relationships is not like your whole world. Relationships is not everything. It is only a part of like a part of your life when there is many other aspects in your life. So it's almost like the the. It's almost like the the, the energy of understanding when you're in a relationship and the beginning stages, right? You guys are so in love and you're so like texting 24 seven and like just all mushy and stuff. And as time progresses that, you know, either that becomes annoying or when it doesn't happen, you're automatically thinking negative and you're thinking like they must be doing something because they're not 24 seven texting me no more. They're this, they're that. There is like some insecurity issues that start to come up. And in this, what they're ultimately saying is that you have to understand that you have to nurture all other aspects of your life because if you fully focus and put all your devotion, attention, energy, and effort to a relationship, which is only one aspect of your life, everything else is going to be affected. And what they're telling you here is that there's a need for balance. There's a need to balance or nurture every other aspect of your life. It's kind of like the situation where I don't know if you've ever had a friend or someone that uh, broke up, right? And they don't want to go to work. They don't want to do nothing. They just, you know, they just want to give up basically. And it's like, okay, love is great, right? Love is amazing. Um, but it doesn't pay your bills and no one else is going to pay your bills. So you have to be responsible. That's the energy that I'm sensing here. So for a lot of you guys, what they're saying here is that it is important to nurture every other aspect of your life, not just because you become or get into a relationship doesn't mean that you give all your attention and effort and energy to that. Because the, the, the moment that person is no longer in the picture, everything in your life is going to fall apart. Because you made that such a necessity and such a priority that everything else, either you cut links to friends, you stop hanging out with them, you start becoming very reclusive, very, you know, antisocial because your relationship was your baby, essentially. And you kind of feel lost. And when that person is no longer there, it's like you don't you don't feel like yourself anymore. You feel like a part of you is missing. And the reason for it is because you treated that connection or that relationship like your priority. And yes, relationships should be a priority, but it doesn't mean it is your whole priority. Do you see what I'm saying? So there is a need for balance here. Um, take what is happening right now. I feel like I said, um, like I said initially when they were saying it, it's almost like life is taking you guys on two separate pathways. The reason for that is because they have to focus on certain aspects of their life and you primarily have to focus on your goals and aspirations or your finances. Um, learning to bring balance because if you don't bring balance to a relationship, 
either you or the person does get tired of the clinginess. It gets tired of like you guys just over exhaust each other because of making, you know, that person your whole life. It's like a obsessive type of energy here, honestly. Um, so you have to be careful with that Virgo. All right, let's see what the Oracle message is for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oracle message for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to this situation. We have number 35. So that is all to do with success, security. Uh, there is certainty here. And again, we go back to this situation, right? If you feel like you connect with the message here, what they're telling you is know and understand that there is there is work there is work that needs to happen in this connection. There is you know, keeping or making your profession, your job, whatever it is that you do, uh, making that uh, uh, something very important and crucial for you to nurture right now. Um, it is about manifestation. It is about being able to manifest, to make things happen. Um, but for that, you need focus. And there is also a need to get your priorities straight, Virgo. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right, Libra. We have the Knight of Wands, Two of Swords, Four of Cups, Two of Wands. Two of Pentacles and the World card. Okay, so there is there is duality that you're experiencing right now, Virgo. I mean Libra. I was gonna say Virgo. Um, there is a culmination. There is a cycle that is coming to its conclusion. There's something that you're very much in your head about that you are currently going through or experiencing. For some of you guys, uh, this could be almost like feeling. Like you need to make a decision, but you're stuck because you don't want to make that decision. Um, for some of you guys, it could have to do with relationships, with partnerships. For others of you, this could be um, an opportunity that presents itself to you, uh, an opportunity in regards to your finances. So this could be almost like getting an offer, getting an offer that you were expecting. As an example, you could have applied um, you could have applied to a specific job or position two months ago and you recently started a new job because a month ago you got hired on by another company that you thought the the first one that you had applied to wasn't interested so you took that job and now you have the one you wanted coming back around and trying to hire you on but now you got comfortable with the with the one that you're working at right now i hope that makes sense so this could be in relationships as well. This could have been that you got yourself into a relationship when in reality you were hoping or wanting some type of reconciliation and because it didn't come quick enough, you jump ships. So now you're in a position where there's news that's coming to you uh, or that you recently found out and you wish or are hoping that you shouldn't have done what you did or that you didn't make that decision so quickly because now it seems like everything is aligning for you, but it just makes it more difficult because there are certain things that you need to do that you are not wanting to do. Like the example of the job, this could be a relationship as well. It could have been that you were hoping for some type of reconciliation or reconnection. It didn't happen quick enough or the way you wanted. You went ahead and got yourself into another relationship, and now you feel very imbalanced because... There is an opportunity that is opening up, but now everything is like more confusing. So what Spirit is ultimately telling you here is at the end of the day, you need to understand that if you stay in a position or if you stay in a relationship that is not fulfilling to you or that is not that you're not emotionally invested in, 
you're not only wasting your time because you know it's not going to go anywhere else, but you're also wasting your partner's time. And you must understand or be aware from pe previous experiences, previous relationships, what it feels like to be played or to be hurt. So what they're telling you is it's time for you to take self-responsibility, to close the chapter on things that are no longer serving you or to close the to close the door on a missed opportunity that is now coming back around again there is this hesitation of should i go back should i you know stay where i'm at whatever it is but ultimately what they're saying here is if you cared or if you loved the person enough from the past you wouldn't have gotten yourself into this new relationship so again sometimes things happen situations change to see if we've grown if we've matured, if we've learned our lesson. And it's not so much about a missed opportunity. It has more to do with the fact that, like I said, it, it's kind of like when a person says they love two people. You you cannot love two people. Like if you thought you loved someone, it could have been that you were in love with the illusion of who that person was, but then you found someone and you fell in love for who they truly are or what you've known about them up until now. If you really loved the first person, you wouldn't have fell in love with the with the new person. You you see what I'm saying? I hope it's making sense. It's a little bit it's a little bit confusing here. Ultimately, what they're saying here is take self responsibility from the decisions you made. Don't sit there and say, um, you know, that it was a missed opportunity. It wasn't. Everything happens for a reason, and if you got yourself out of that relationship and you are now in a current relationship, there's a reason why that current relationship is in your life right now. Discarding it or putting it to the side or even, you know, creating more confusion and not being completely honest or trans transparent with your partner. Remember, what goes around comes around. So, all right, let's see what the Oracle message is here for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oracle message in regards to the situation. Okay, here we go. And we have 16. So this is clarity. This is spirituality values, being genuine. This is about perfection, fullness. This is potential. This is also being able to see light at the end of the tunnel. So though you may feel overwhelmed, though you may feel like you're confused and you don't want to make the wrong choice or the wrong decision, don't rush into making any decision at all, Libra. Take your time and, and really internalize what it is that you want. And if it gets to the point of having to choose, understand that it is crucial and important to know with certainty what it is that you want. Therefore, you can take action towards it, um, being unapologetic about it and going towards it with purpose. Okay? All right, my lovelies, now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, okay, one more. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right, your first card here is the Ten of Pentacles, King of Woho, King of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles. Money, money, money. <laughs> All right, Scorpio, you are definitely going to have a glow up. There is a lot of stability coming through for you guys. There is a lot of potential here. And what I'm hearing is elevation. I think the past two months, they've been speaking about taking it to the next level. I definitely see that now. Um, so I feel very strongly from now all the way to October, you guys are going to be experiencing um, the results of your hard work, the results of um, the hard labor that you've been putting, um, whether it's in your profession, whether it's in your career, there is a higher elevation of status here. There is 
uh, getting a higher ranking position. There is having the power, maybe even being given a position you didn't even think you would be able to achieve in such a short time. Yes, it's going to be a bit consuming because I do see you taking on much more responsibilities. However, they're telling you, take these opportunities because these are opportunities that do not come uh, easily or at all, even to some. Um, Seven of Pentacles is, again, like I said, being able to see the rewards of your hard work and determination. Knight of Pentacles, it's been a long journey for you, but you're starting to see the results of this. Now, for those of you guys that are currently not working or have been having difficulty in regards to your finances from now all the way to uh, October, there is definitely an increase in your finances. There is money coming in. For some of you guys, could be unexpected news, unexpected money. Um, this could be like getting, um, and this is very quick in coming. So for some of you guys, it could be like receiving a check in the mail that you were definitely not expecting or that you completely forgot. Um, this could be type of thing where the IRS, you know, accidentally took more money from you and they send you a check and you weren't even aware of it. For others of you, it is, like I said, taking it to the next level in your career. Really push yourself, Scorpio, because when I see so many pentacles, it is an indication that you are the only one that can limit yourself when it comes to creating uh, more wealth, more prosperity. For some of you guys, I do see you guys uh, really working your ass off to get uh, your home and you're finally being able to get to that point. You're finally able to start shopping around or looking around. There is the potential for a um, for a major purchase. Like I said, it could be a new home. It could be getting your first home. Um, there is definitely some goal here that is being achieved uh, and that is very well, well received here. So again, uh, congratulations, a Scorpio. Hard work is paying off. All right, let's see what the Oracle message for you is here. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, all right. And we have number five. Like I said, this is all to do with tranquility. This is long-term growth. This is um, longevity. You know, this is starting to really see um, or have the opportunity to plant your seeds. Uh, again, uh, for some of you guys, I do see a home purchase. For others of you, there could be some type of relocation, um, buying or purchasing a home. For others of you, um, really making plans to, this could be like investments as well. This could be um, maybe you're, you know, starting to make investments, something that you never did or you've never done in the past and you're starting to see uh, really the rewards for others of you. It could be thinking long term, could be putting, you know, some money to the side for plans for the near future. For others of you, this can also represent uh, investing in your health. So for some of you guys, this could be, um, as an example, you know, uh, getting life insurance, thinking of the future and making sure that, um, making sure that there is, uh, that you're making your family or your loved ones um, life easier should anything happen. This is about basically thinking of the future. So beautiful, beautiful type of energy there. Congratulations, Scorpio. All right. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius here. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What can they expect for this month of September 2022? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Oh, okay. Starting off here with the Knight of Cups, the Emperor, Two of Cups, Nine of Wands, Four of Pentacles, Queen of Cups. Okay. Interesting. So, what they're saying here is um, you need to be more open, Sagittarius. You need to really express what you're feeling um, when we're talking about it, like in every single aspect of your life. This could be career. This could be your finances. This could be family, friends, relatives. There's almost like this wall that you've created where 
it's not very easy for you to communicate or express how you're feeling. Um, and people are often feeling like you're very detached. Um, but what they are telling you here is understanding that there is a need to sometimes be open and vulnerable um, because we all, and I don't care who tells you otherwise, we all need a little encouragement sometimes. And it's okay to be stubborn. It's okay to want to do things on your own. Um, but when it comes to emotions, emotions is a very fragile, very different type of beast, right? And though we may suppress certain emotions, as time progresses, the more you suppress it, it will come up in a very aggressive way when you feel you're being attacked. And it's not necessarily what they're saying or how they're saying it. It has more to do with the timing of it, right? That you've been suppressing these emotions for so long until it gets to a point where you hit your limit and then someone makes a comment and that sets you off. And it's not even the common, it's more to do with, again, the suppressed emotions that you've been going or dragging around for quite a while. I feel that there is a shift that's happening here. Now, this could be in regards to a relationship where there's been a constant need for some type of stability, some type of more than stability, some type of like, What's the word I'm looking for? Consistency. And in this process of needing that stability and that consistency, I feel like both of you guys have raised your walls basically to protect yourself and no one's communicating, no one's expressing. And it's most certainly starting to affect the connection or relationship. Now, for some of you guys, this isn't, this isn't romantic. This could be family and friends. This could be that... At some point, there was almost a feeling like every time they try to give you advice, you feel like you're being attacked. And it got to a point where you've completely shut them out or it completely raised that wall of protection and just don't want to deal with it. Um, but in reality, the only one that you're hurting in the process is yourself, Sagittarius. Why? Because I see you feeling very alone, very misunderstood. And again, it has more to do with, you know, wanting to prove that you're strong, wanting to prove that you're capable. Like we know that you are, but sometimes if you need help, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to be vulnerable. You don't always have to uh, be the one to, uh, you know, figure things out. Like, especially if it comes down to the feeling of, and I want to say that this passing full moon could have made you extremely emotional. Um, you may, you know, randomly find yourself crying, watching a movie or something, and you just start, anything emotional is really triggering you right now. The reason for it is because there is a major need here for you to unblock your heart chakra. And I feel that the reason why it's been blocked is because you've been through many emotional uh, lessons that has really hurt you, that has really brought about a lot of lessons. And I think that your defensive mechanism was to automatically protect your heart. Um, so there is definitely a, a blockage in that chakra. And there is a need for you to break through it. And the only way to do so is to start to embrace your emotions, to start to give it validity, to acknowledge them. Um, now, for those of you guys, if this is in regards to a relationship, I feel like you were, you could have been dealing with the person that made you very insecure because that person was extremely confident or it almost felt like from a distance they had all their shit together. Um, and I feel like f this kind of feared or created some type of fear in you that you relied on your self, de the, your self defense uh, mechanism, which was to fuck it up <laughs> so that you can push them away. But now I see you like revisiting or wanting to revisit that. And you know that you went about it the wrong way because this person hasn't made you feel the way you feel now in a very long time. So this could have been someone that you recently met. This could have been someone that perhaps you met in the past. That wasn't nothing substantial, but the feeling of that connection just seemed like very different than what you've dealt with. 
and there is a, almost a feeling of wanting to revisit, but you're blaming yourself because you could have pushed this person away. You could have done something very immature and you push them away, but there is a desire to want to revisit. However, I do want to mention, I do see a revisiting of this. I do see that there is an opportunity to rekindle <clears throat> or to uh, reconnect with this person. But again, the message is the same. There is a need for you to open your heart space. There is a need for you to... Um, the energy that it's giving me here with the emperor, it's almost giving me the energy of the emperor in reverse. And the emperor in reverse is very aggressive. It is... Uh, very selfish, narcissistic. Um, it's their way, basically. And it's also giving me, um, like, the need to prove how strong you are by being, like, by being an asshole, right? That that makes you feel like you're reasserting who you are or your strength. Um, so if you're a female, it could be a situation where you were very snarky or very sarcastic or very, like, to the point with the person that you were dealing with. And you felt that by doing that, right, um, you were protecting yourself. But in reality, you turned them off because you were just mean. And now you're realizing that you hadn't felt what you felt for that person or you hadn't been this excited in a while. And now you're wondering, like, what happened? Like, what? And you're not realizing that even being, like, mean is not really who you are. It's just that you've become, you've allowed yourself to become that because of the hurt that you've been through in the past. So it's kind of a reflection of having to bring it back and to internalize why am I presenting myself this way or why am I acting this way? You feel like you're protecting yourself, but in reality, you're pushing people away. And there is a need to break that cycle. There is a need to embrace your femininity, whether you're female or, or, or whether you're female or masculine, it, there is a need to embrace your femininity. There is a need to embrace your vulnerability um, and to, to let, let the fear falter, to pull away from the fear because a lot of your romantic connections have a tendency of bringing out those fears and then you react based on fear, not necessarily who you are, but for the need of protecting yourself. And this, in turn actually uh, is a detriment to your self-growth and the growth of that connection. All right, let's see what the Oracle message is here for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the message for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? All right, and we have number 31. And this is all to do with the, the sun. Greatest joy, this is fortune, zest for life, energy, confidence, and creative power. It is a blessing that's coming your way, but in order for you to fully embrace that blessing, you need to embrace, like we said, your emotions and be true to your emotions. And whenever sometimes it feels like your emotions could be overwhelming and it's scary, try to sit with that type of energy for a bit and try to realize what is it, what's really the fear behind that. Um, is it being vulnerable or is it being vulnerable and then feeling like, you don't want to end up getting hurt again, which is completely understandable. But also understanding that you can't fully embrace or experience a very loving, healthy relationship if you're not able to be open to it. Okay? All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Capricorn. Let's see what's going on for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In the month of September 2022. One more. All right, here we go. We have the Seven of Cups, Knight of Swords, Devil here, Three of Swords, Justice, Page of Swords. What the heck is going on? What is really going on in Capricorn? All right, so I see a lot of confusion right now, a lot of confusion regarding a situation that is coming up or that you've been dealing with Capricorn for quite a while. And there is, it's bringing about, 
it's bringing about the remembrance of experiences that you've gone through in the past. So what I mean by that is constantly having or feeling like you're not clear on people's intentions or how they present themselves to you. Um, and there's like this recurring theme, right? The recurring theme here is believing people or believing who they are at face value. And you keep feeling like you end up being empty handed or like people just let you down or they continuously keep letting you down. And there is almost like a revisiting of something from the past, something that brought to you a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. And you felt like there was, you felt like there was some type of, almost like you blame yourself for what you've been through or what you keep dealing with when we're talking about relationships, there is this strong energy of karma, but it's almost like you've convinced yourself that maybe you were a bad person in a previous life and that's why relationships is just something that is really overwhelming or difficult for you or it just seems like they keep letting you down but what spirit is really telling you here is stop making the same fucking mistake, Capricorn. That's what they're saying. Like you keep giving people the benefit of the doubt, even if they let you down once or twice, like you keep being hopeful. And what spirit is telling you is there is a need for balance. There is a need for you to understand those red flags or that which is not working and to make a decision and a decision that is not based on emotion, but that it's based off of the intellect. And to not hesitate of cutting people that are freaking toxic. It's like, what I'm hearing is like, why do I keep repeating or why do I keep experiencing this? Like, I deserve better. Maybe it means that in the past life I was a horrible person. Spirit is telling you like, no Capricorn. Like, it has nothing to do with that. It has more to do that you proactively choose people that keep showing you inconsistency, that keep showing you that they're not a good person, that they're not in it. They're not looking for something long-term, but yet you continuously keep rushing. For some of you guys, I'm gonna be honest, you rush on the physical aspect. And then, like, that's how you date, right? And we all know Capricorns are extremely physical. Um, sea goat and everything. But what they're saying is, like, you're wiser now. You've experienced. Take that experience to your benefit. If you're looking for something long-term then you need to be having conversations with the people you're dating about longevity, about the future. And if they don't or they discard that conversation, then that should be a flag that, hey, this person is not looking, you know, they're here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> now, keep in mind, this could be vice versa because it is a general reading. This could be you doing that to people and feeling like, you end up feeling empty. You end up feeling alone. Like, can you really blame people for not sticking around when you continuously keep pushing them away? It's almost like you push them away as a defense mechanism, like prove to me your loyalty or prove to me your love. But guess what? People get tired of shit too. And if it's a person that is bringing to you a healthy relationship and you're testing them because you're toxic or you're embracing toxic behavior, they're going to be like, I'm out. Because a healthy person is not going to be dealing with that. 
So what they're telling you here is take the lessons that you've learned and implement them in your life. Take some self-responsibility. You don't have response, like it's not your responsibility how people treat you, but it is your responsibility if you allow them to continuously keep treating you in such a such manner or vice versa. You cannot go about life treating people like shit and then expecting to be blessed in other aspects of your life because it doesn't work that way. So this is about implementing the lessons you've gone through in your everyday life and pulling away from toxic traits or behaviors to bring balance into your life. All right, Capricorn. Let's see what your oracle message is here. Oh, we have number 17. And this is about change, modification, variation, balance. There is a need for you to bring balance into your life, Capricorn. Whether it's relationships, it never works out, it never works out. Well, it never works out because you have a tendency of choosing the same type of individual. It may be a different body, but it's the same energy. So you need to outgrow that. Or, you know, I'm going through this difficulty. It almost feels like, you know, I'm dealing with karma. Well, if you continuously keep being shitty to other people or playing with them or toying with their emotions, you're not going to be blessed, right? Because you need to learn those lessons. You need to outgrow that. So it is about taking self-responsibility so that you can fully embrace change. All right, Capricorn. That was a rough one for you guys. <laughs> All right, now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right, we have the Queen of Pentacles, Page of Wands, Eight of Wands, Magician, Ace of Cups, Five of Swords. Wow. All right, Aquarius, there is definitely love in the air for you. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with an Earth Energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. There's some type of desire of connecting, or for some of you guys, it could be that you met online. And there is a desire to come together or to see each other on a physical aspect. For some of you guys, it could be a long distance type of relationship or connection um, and a desire to actually bring that like to a manifestation to take it off the ground, basically. What they are saying here is that it's very important to really have open conversation about what it is that you guys are expecting in regards to the connection or relationship. The reason I say that is because I see it hot and heavy in the very beginning. And it's almost like you guys have drawn each other or have brought each other or have manifested each other. Um, if recently you've been working on, you know, drawing love to you, whether it's through spell work or whether it's through manifestations or whether it's through visualizations, I definitely see that connection happening for you guys by the end of this month, if not the beginning of October. There is a connection and this feels very recent to me, but this is what I'm going to put out, okay? If you're one of the people that recently, Aquarius, if you're recently separated or recently broke up with someone, don't be quick to jump into another relationship because I feel like this relationship has the potential for something long term, has the potential for something deep. It's almost like it will feed your spiritual side. And this is something that you're going to love about this connection. But then I see you struggling. And I see you struggling because in the back, this is what's really standing out to me. It's like the people that you left, right? The people that you left in the past are coming back around 
and you don't know what to do. So again, if you recently came out of a relationship and there is a connection that has progressed or that will be progressing and it gets a little bit deeper, don't be quick to jump into that relationship because I want you to fully be able to heal from the previous relationship. Because if you don't and you're quick to jump into this connection that is unfolding or coming towards you, you're going to end up screwing this up. And I feel like it's not coincidence that this person is coming into your life because there is a purpose for this connection. It's almost like you've manifested this person and this person has been manifesting you. So again, you don't want to jeopardize that. You don't want to be quick into jumping into a relationship where you're still holding on to something from the past. Because the moment it shows up, it's going to completely throw you off and you're going to be confused and you're not going to know what to do. And then the lies and deception starts. You don't want to taint this relationship that's coming to you. Now, for those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, get yourself out of your head. Stop making excuses. If you recently met someone online and you keep progressively like changing the date or rescheduling or whatever, get over your fears and make it happen. This has the potential for something long-term, something very fulfilling for you, Aquarius, because I see the bond or connection on a spiritual level. Sometimes change is scary. But sometimes it's the best thing that can happen to you. Keep that in mind. All right, let's see what the Oracle message for Aquarius is here. Oracle message for Aquarius. Here we go. And we have 25. This is relationship. This is a relationship that will be evolving for you from now all the way to October. This is a contract, bond, unit, vow, promise beautiful energy Aquarius all right now let's go to Pisces last but not least I will probably do next the next video I will probably start the opposite with Pisces first all right let's get into it Pisces Sun Moon Rising Venus for the month of October I mean September <laughs> I'm already jumping to October all right, let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of September 2022. September 2022. All right, here we go. We have the Four of Wands, King of Swords, Moon, Tower, holy shit, Five of Wands, and the Judgment. Wow, okay. So there is, I feel like your life is going to be shaken up, Pisces. Keep in mind, we just experienced the full moon on your sign. It's going to reveal to you, you're going to be experiencing a lot of revelations that is going to really open your eyes, open your eyes towards what you want, what your happiness is, and it's almost like a refocusing. They're showing me a camera and you're seeing things through the camera, but you're also changing or like focusing on the target. And this is you focusing on your future. Focusing on your future, something that to the point of something like you've never done before. And a lot of this has to do with the shakeups that you're going to be experiencing. There is, for some of you guys, those of you guys that are married, I feel like there's going to be some type of revelations happening surrounding that connection or that relationship where it's going to really open your eyes to, it's going to open your eyes to see your partner in a very different light, a light you've never seen them before. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative thing. For some of you guys, this could be that you start to see 
a major transformation happen within them. Being as an example, if they were usually the, you know, sit back, kind of be comfortable and be in my comfort zone, you may start to see them act a little bit erratic because it's so much out of their character, like wanting to be more spontaneous, wanting to be more social, wanting to be more. And the reason for this is because there is a revamp in this connection. However, what they're saying here is there is a revaluating of the aspirations or goals in regards to this relationship. So as an example, like I said, if your partner was usually the more calm, the one that was like more homey type and be in the comfort zone, and you would always like nag them about it or want them to be more social, wanting, wanting them to be more like out there, there is this change in their energy where they start to become that. And now it starts to trigger you because you're more focused or concerned in the relationship or the dynamic or the family dynamic. And this is really going to test this connection or this relationship. So the best way of describing it is like I said, your person starts to become very social, starts to maybe even have a constant need for like the party scene, you know, being more out there and you're the one that's becoming more homey or you're the one that's becoming more like wanting to vibe alone or be in your comfort zone or be in the family dynamic. Um, and it starts to create a lot of arguments. It starts to create a lot of confusion around this relationship where you're refocusing or reevaluating or revisiting are we on the same page type of scenario. Now, this could be vice versa because it is a general reading. So with that, there is a decision that will be need to be made in the month of September or by the end of this month. For others of you, if you've been struggling in your relationship or there's been a lot of confusion in regards to your partner's actions or like how they've been acting lately, there's going to be revelations that come out. And this is, like I said, it's going to make you see your partner in a very different way. And it's almost like figuring out or finding out that you guys are not on the same page or that you guys now don't want the same things. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. Like I said, sometimes it happens. Sometimes we outgrow the relationship. Sometimes we outgrow our partners. But because that happens, there is this need to hold on to what we've outgrown out of fear or out of responsibility or out of being scared that you're not going to find someone else or that you're not going to or that you are capable of overcoming this. The thing about it is here with the moon and the tower and the five of wands, it's like what's been hiding or what's been off in the relationship, it's coming to its full like center stage. And that lid is being popped open. And it's figuring out that all this time, it could be as simplistic as finding out that, well, not simplistic because we have the tower here, but it could be like finding out that this whole time uh, that you've been living together, you thought at some point you guys would get married and then you find out that your partner doesn't want to get married. They just want to live like that forever. And this really bugs you because you've always wanted that type of stability, the marriage, right? Or, or whatever. Um, or it could be that, you know, your partner has been extremely detached lately and you don't know why, you don't know what's going on. And revelations start to happen where you realize that they're just unhappy. There's no connection there. 
Or it could be that you realize that you've been holding on to this relationship, trying to make it work for so long, and you come to the realization that you've outgrown them, that your feelings are not as strong as they once were. There are revelations that are coming out in the open, Pisces. Whether it's negative or positive, it is a general reading. It could be you know, positive for some, positive in the aspect if you've been in a stagnant marriage or in a stagnant relationship, hasn't been working out and you don't know what to do. And then things start to come out to the open where it gives you basically the green light. Like I knew it wasn't working. Now it's time to rise to the occasion and, and make, you know, make a decision and not hesitate about making it. Um, that could be a positive. The negative could be finding out that, like I said, you've been thinking it's going to go to marriage and then you've realized that your partner never wants to get married. That could be definitely a deal breaker. So again, there are revelations that are unfolding. Whether it be positive or negative, there are things that are going to be coming out to the open where you're realizing and there is a need to revisit or take inventory of the relationship and is it worth pursuing. For some of you guys, it could be that you know, pride or stubbornness is something that is slowly drifting the relationship, both of you guys apart. And it's coming to the realization of that. Are we more toxic to each other, being around each other and trying to make it work? Or should we just walk away? No matter how you break it down, there are definitely revelations and secrets coming out this month, Pisces. So wishing you guys the very best. Let's see what Oracle message is here for Pisces in regards to this situation. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, and we have number 18. Okay. This card speaks about loyalty. Friendships. For some of you guys, it could be a revelation about a friend regarding their loyalty to you. For some of you guys, it's finding out that your partner has been dealing with a friend or someone you knew. But there is definitely a major shakeup and clearing the air of where you felt like you were blind or where you felt there was a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty, and you weren't sure why. All of this is going to be revealed to you, Pisces, in this month. All right, my lovelies, I hope that this gives you some type of insight. I don't really necessarily like to end things on a, a bad note, but the positive in this is that you should always want the full picture. And if that's what this month is bringing to you, Pisces, then be blessed in that aspect that you no longer will have to be debating, breaking your head, breaking, not being able to sleep because there's just something that feels off and you keep saying, maybe I'm crazy. And then boom, you weren't crazy. So again, take the messages as they resonate. Uh, what doesn't, don't try to force it. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I hope it gives you some type of clarity and insight and we will see each other soon. Till then, bye bye.